Hello everyone and welcome again to my channel English with Mado. In this very special video, I'm going to cover one of writing task two essays, which is the problem and solution essays. Have you ever practiced this specific task? You know, many students or many candidates are still struggling to get a high score in IELTS writing task two. Why? Because they have sort of deficiency in the strategy, or maybe they lack the actual technique or the strategy to score high in this very particular test. So why everyone is scoring low? Not everyone, but most students or most candidates are scoring low in this very specific band writing task two. Why? Why do you think? What, 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 as, what, sorry, what actually is the reason behind this? So there, there is a specific reason behind this. What is it? Many points are considered to be able to score high in writing task two. First of all, the structure of your essay. As you all know, writing task two consists of four paragraphs. Introduction, main body paragraph one, main body paragraph two, and the conclusion. I will go into details a bit later. So you need to be aware of the strategy at first. Second, you need to understand the question very well. If you don't understand the question, you will definitely fail this test. You need to be familiar with the topic. So before embarking on taking this exam, you will need to familiarize yourself with you know, a lot of vocabularies regarding economy, society, commerce, government, or natural disasters, or like, for example, the pandemic right now, you need to read a lot. You need to watch news. When you watch a news or when you read the news, for example, BBC, CNN, whatever, you will enrich yourself with heaps and a multitude of terminologies or vocabularies. So in order to succeed in this specific test, you will need to actually apply these points. You have to start from now. So you might be um, realizing or you are definitely realizing that I'm actually showing you essays that contain a lot of thick vocabularies. If you are new, you know, in this channel, or if, you, or if, uh, or if it's the first time of you watching my videos, um, then I will go, you know, um, step by step to make sure that you, that you, you would understand the full topic or the full explanation of writing task two. And if you, um, even if you are still new, even if you are new, like a new joiner, I want you to actually go down or just not go down. So go to, um, just go check my previous videos. I did upload um, opinion essays and I did upload also discussion essays. So that is the first writing task two video I am uploading. Okay, so try to actually check what I have uploaded to be familiar more with this video. But even though I will consider, or I will just like, you know, I classify you as a new joiner to this channel to be able to understand the whole topic, to be able to understand what I'm talking about. What am I, what actually, um, yes, what I am highlighting. I want you to understand the full technique and the full strategy. So I, I will be showing you now an example explanation of a specific topic, which is, um, you know, I am um, confined or which is um, related to um, problem and solution essays. It's a very actually um, straightforward question or type of essays. It doesn't require a lot of efforts to apply the strategy. It's quite easy. And um, uh, you will find yourself very comfortable when you, uh, stick actually to the whole video. So I want you to try your best to watch the whole video. Trust me, you are not gonna get bored. It's not tiresome, it's not noisome at all. It's very enjoyable. 
because you are going to take the full strategy that would guarantee a band eight score or even a band nine score in writing plus two. And I'm not joking. I'm not just throwing out words. I'm telling the truth, okay? So try to stick to the whole video or till the end to make sure that you would understand this specific lesson. So now let's jump more into detail. Okay, so I, before I jump, okay, I'm sorry. I was gonna share the screen, now I forgot. So let me just share the screen. I'm going to share the screen, I'm going to share, yep, that, that's the one. Here we go. So let me just maximize it. Here we go. Again, here we go. Okay. Sorry. So now how to plan and write an um, uh, IELTS problem solution essays. So as you can see, IELTS problem solution essays are the most challenging essay time for many people. The way they are worded can vary hugely, which can make it difficult to understand how you should answer the question. Generally, you will be asked to write about both the problem or cause and the solution to a specific issue. Sometimes, however, you will only be required to write about possible solutions. The, the three essay types, problem and solution, cause and solution, or just the solution. Usually the most familiar question is problem and solution or cause and solution. I will just show you in a bit what is the difference between the problem and cause. So now, for example, here are two typical IELTS problem solution essay questions. They consist of a statement followed by the question or instruction. Number one. One problem faced by almost every large city is traffic congestion. What do you think the causes are and what solutions can you suggest? So that's number one. Now, number two, since the beginning, sorry, since the beginning of the 20th century, the number of endangered species has increased significantly, oh, significantly. And we have witnessed more mass extinctions in this period than in any other period of time. State some reasons for this and provide possible solutions. So these are examples of different ways in which, let me just move this. Okay, so these are some examples of different ways in which questions can be phrased. The first half of the questions relate to the problem or cause and the second half to the solution. Okay, so I'm going to show you some other wordings of you know, solution or causes or the problems or whatever. So for example, the first one, what issues does this, does this cause and how can they be addressed? So issues is a synonym of problems. Next question, what are some resulting social problems and how can we deal with them? So that's problem and solution. How can we deal means solution. What problems arise from this and how can they be tackled? So problems and how can they be tackled mean solutions. Why is this, how might be remedied? Why is this means reason or cause? How might, might it be remedied? Remedied means solved, okay? Remedied comes from the, the noun remedy. Remedy means a therapy. It could be a solution as well, a solution of a specific matter. Next one, what are the reasons for this and how can the situation be improved? So they asking us about the reasons, so that's the causes. And how can the situation be improved means the solution. Why is this happening and what measures can be taken to tackle this problem? So they, that's the reason, the cause. When you see the, the word why means they asking about the cause or the reason. And what, my, what sorry, what measures can be taken to tackle this problem? So th that means the solution, okay? And here are a few questions where you only have to write about the solution. For example, how can the situation be improved? What solutions can you suggest to deal with this problem? How can this problem be solved? What measures could be taken to prevent this? So as you can see, they showed us 
a lot of questions above about either causes and solution or problems and solutions. And the other half, they actually showed us some questions, some typical wording questions about solutions. Okay, so these are different synonyms of the word solution that could be asked in many ways. So it's important that you are able to recognize the common synonyms, words and phrases used in the problem solution questions. Here are the keywords and the synonyms used in the questions above. So instead of using problem, they used issues or resulting or situation. Instead of cause, they might use reasons or the word why. So the WH question, why? And then we have um, solution, they used deal with, addressed, tackled, remedied, improved, measures taken, solved, prevent. So we have a lot of synonyms about or of the word solution. Okay, so um, don't complicate yourself. Don't feel it's complicated. I know it, it might be a bit expanded in this in in this slide right here, but it's just about they are showing you that we have two types of solu uh, uh, you know um, problem and solution. As say, it's either problem and solution or cause and solution, or or it could be solutions alone. Usually, it's a quite rare to be actually asked for the solution only. Okay, so they always or they quite frequently ask about both problem and solution or causes and solution. Okay, understood? Now, before we move on to some common mistakes, I want to quickly explain the difference between a problem and a cause. Let's see the following examples here. So we have a problem here. The problem says, I've missed the, the last bus home after visiting my friend for the evening. So that's the problem. Cause, I misread the timetable and thought the bus left at 22.45 when it actually left at 22.35. So have you noticed the difference between the problem and cause? So in the problem, we stated the general situation or the general matter. So I've, I've missed the bus after visiting my friend, but why? Why did I miss it? Because I misread the timetable and thought the bus left at 22.45 when blah, blah, blah. What does it mean? So when they ask you about the problem, you can just write about a general thing or just like the overall topic of it. But even though you have to be specific, you can't just choose something very general as a problem. You have to be specific about it. And when they ask you about the causes, you will need to mention the problem with the cause or the cause that led to this. Okay, I will show you later on. So now this cause, the cause is the reason for the problem. We will be looking at question analysis in more detail in a minute. So now we have six common mistakes. This, these six errors are common in IELTS problem solution essays. If you confuse a problem and cause a solutions, you would lose marks. If you don't have, if, sorry, if you have too many ideas, you would lose marks. If you don't develop your ideas, you would lose marks. If you don't develop both sides of the argument equally, you would definitely lose marks. If you don't link the problems and solutions, you would lose marks. And if you don't be specific like enough about the matter, you would definitely lose marks as well. So you need to take um, into consideration or into account all these common mistakes before writing or before jumping more into details. So it's common for an, for an essay to consist of a list of problems and solutions without any of them being expanded on or linked to each other. Sometimes students will focus on just the problem or only the solution, which leads to an unbalanced essay. But these issues will result in a low score for task achievement. You must choose just one or two problems and pick solutions directly linked to them. Explain them and give examples. Let's see what I mean. So the essay structure. Now let's look at a simple structure you can use to write IELTS problem solution essays. It's not the only possible structure, but it's the one I recommend because it's easy to learn and will enable you to quickly plan and write a high level essay. So 
Let's uh, jump first into the introduction. So the first thing that you need to do in the introduction is paraphrase the question. And then the second thing you need to state the, the main problem or the key problem or cause and a related solution. Are you aware of how to paraphrase? How do we paraphrase? In paraphrasing, you will need to try to replace as much as you can of words. So for example, instead of using countries, you can write nations. Instead of experts, you might use authorities. Instead of cards, you might use um, vehicles. Instead of petrol, you might use fuel. Instead of expand, you might use extend. Instead of explain, you might use elucidate. Instead of clear, you might use obvious. Instead of uh, not clear, you can use vague or ambiguous. Have you noticed what I'm talking about? So you have to try to actually change as much as you can of words. However, you don't have to change or modify every single word. You don't need to do that. If you are not aware or not cognizant of one of the synonyms, then don't use it. You need to be totally sure that the word you are using is completely matching with the word written in the actual question. Okay, so don't forget this point. Otherwise, you would definitely lose marks and you would definitely change the overall topic of the sentence unintentionally. Okay, so even by the way, you can even change, for example, the verb tense, or you can, for example, if the phrase is written in the active form, you can just modify it and, and write it in the passive form. So, for example, um, I will show you some examples um, again to make sure. But now let's, let's just continue and jump into details with the structure of um, this specific essay. And yes, before I jump onto the main body paragraph one, let me just explain to you what, what does it mean when you state the one key problem and the one or cause or, and the related solution. So I, you need to actually try to write a specific problem or a specific cause about um, what's called about the matter. And the problem and cause, sorry, the problem or cause and the solution has, um, you know, you have to be related, have to be connected or linked somehow, or like some, you know, I will show you what I mean. So I, the main body paragraph one would be about problem or cause, topic sentence, where you state the problem or cause. So as you can see, the topic sentence, by the way, has been already written in the introduction here, but you have to write it here in your own way. So you have to do more paraphrase or you have to try to make it clearer or more or like obvious. Okay, and then you have to explain it. You need to give detail explaining the problem or cause, and then you have to mention an example. After that, we have the solution paragraph, which is the main body paragraph two, topic sentence where you state the solution, explanation where you have to give detail explaining the solution, and then an example sentence. Okay, so the example could be a personal experience, it could be a study, you can make up by the way, for example, you don't need to, um, to be like, you know, um, like factual or like sort of like honest, when you, um, you know, I'll write an example, for example, you can say, a survey um, was held or has been held or carried out in the UK proved that 26% of people or citizens are blah, 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 or have a blah, blah, blah. You can make it up because the examiner is not going to check your facts. The examiner wants to see something that um, sort of like fulfill the explanation and topic sentence. So he wants to actually um, sort of like uh, feel engaging with what you are writing. And he wants to feel sort of like um, very like comprehensive or like a very sort of like... Um, uh, uh, he wants to see some comprehensible information, okay? And then we have the conclusion where you summarize the key points again. So this structure will give us a well-balanced essay with four paragraphs, but one problem or cause and solution or two. Mm. So as you can see, if we go back to the question again, let's see the question, for example. We are going, oh, there's no specific question. Uh, the, uh, the question will come after. Anyway, 
you know, I'm usually the problem or the question in the problem and solution essays asks us for the problems and solution in the plural form. Do we have to write two problems or two solutions? Let's see. So most questions will state problem, causes, and solution in the plural form. There is more than one. However, it's acceptable to write about just one. This will give you an essay of just over the minimum 250 words. To write about two problems, causes, and solutions will require you to write 350 and 400 words, which are a lot to plan and write in the 40 minutes allowed. It's better to fully develop one problem or cause and solution than ending up with one idea missing an explanation or an example because you run out of time. So the step-by-step -step essay structure I'm going to show you includes one problem and solution, but you can write about two if you feel if you like if you feel yourself able to or more comfortable doing so. So now how to plan IS problem solution essays. Here is the question we are going to be answering in our model essay, followed by the three steps of the planning process. So the question says, one problem faced by almost every large city is traffic congestion. What do you think the causes are and what solutions can you suggest? So you need to analyze the question at first, generate ideas and identify vocabulary. So now I read the question, it's very clear. They are talking about the traffic or the heavy traffic in almost every large city in the world. And they consider this as a problem. But in the question, they asking us about the causes, not the problem, the causes and the solutions, means the reasons and the solutions. So let's jump into the first point, which is analyzing the question. So this is an essential step in the planning process and will ensure that you, an you answer the question fully. It's quick and easy to do. You just need to identify three different types of words, topic words, other keywords, and instruction words. So topic words are the ones that identify the general subject of the question and will be found in the statement part of the question. One problem faced by almost every large city is traffic congestion. So this question is about traffic congestion. Many people will do this first step of, this, of the process and then write about the topic in general. This is a serious mistake and leads to low marks for task achievement. What we need to do now that we know the general topic is to understand exactly what aspect of traffic congestion we are being asked to write about. So the other keywords in the question tell you the specific topic you must write about. So as you can see, one problem, large city, problem and large city. So by highlighting these words, it's easy to see that you are being asked to write about the problem of traffic congestion in large cities. So you can't just focus on traffic congestion. No, traffic congestion in large cities. Your essay must only include ideas relevant to these specific ideas. So the instruction words are the question itself. Now we have the instruction words. So the, the instruction words are the question itself. These tell you the type of IELTS problem solution essay you must write. So this is a causes and solutions question. So what, what do you think the causes are and what solutions can you suggest? As you can see, we have the word causes and solutions. So it's the causes and solution type. So now we have fully understood what the question is about or what the what, what topic is about. So now let's move to the second point, which is generate ideas. So the next task is to generate some ideas to write about. These, so we are going to use the friends technique. This is the method I prefer as it allows you to take a step back from the stats of the exam situation and think more calmly. Here is how it works. Imagine that you are chatting with a friend over a cup of coffee and they ask you this question. What are the first thoughts to come into your head? Plan your essay around these ideas. Doing this, 
will help you to come up with simple answers in everyday language rather than straining your brain to think of amazing ideas using high level language, which is not necessary. You might want to try this yourself before reading on for my ideas. So here, here, uh, here, you know, here are my ideas. So we have the first cause, too many cards on the roads. Why? Because increasing numbers of people that own cards or who own cards, because they find it more convenient than buses and trains. So we have a specific cause here, which is too many cars on the road because the number of people owning cars is increasing because they find it more convenient than buses and trains. A very specific cause. Another cause we have inadequate means not enough or, not, or insufficient. So inadequate public transport, crowded, old and dirty. So it could be one of the causes. Poor road layout. Okay, rush hour traffic. Most people travel to and from work at the same times each day. So I can't think about the cause alone. I have to think about a solution for every single cause. So now for the first cause here, which is too many cars on the roads, let's see what solution can you suggest for it. So, um, so that was missed out here, okay. So I think I missed it out, that point. It was supposed to be here somewhere. Oh my God, I forgot it. Yeah, it's here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought it's not here. Okay, so we have for the first goals, which is too many cars on the roads, we have this solution, car sharing, park and ride scheme, or congestion charge. So one of these, you can select two or one of these solutions for the first goals. The second cause, which is inadequate public transport, as they are crowded, old and dirty, what solution I can suggest for this? Let's see. Improve public transport, more frequent and better quality. Amazing solution and quite a step forward. Now let's move to the third cause, which is poor road layout. Let's see a solution. Improve infrastructure here. Yeah. So improve infrastructure. Bus lanes, cycle lanes will make it safer for people to cycle. Amazing solution. Now for the last cause, which is rush hour traffic. Let's see a solution, flexible working hours. So for each cause, you think of immediately write down a possible solution. This you, in this way, you will ensure that the problems and solutions you think of are linked. They have to be linked. For example, you can't, let's say, you might thinking about a cause which is um, too many cars on the roads. And you might, for example, write a solution which is um, use, uh, for example, use environmentally friendly or environmentally, environmentally friendly cars, for example, or eco-friendly products. Do you think that the cause and solution here are linked? They are not linked. So you, you have to make sure that the causes and solutions or the cause and solution are quite and totally linked or related. So you don't need to spend long on this as you, as you, as, as you only need one or two ideas. I've got more far ideas. So I've got more far more ideas here than I need as I, as I spent more time thinking about it than I would in the real exam. I'm going to pick just one cause to develop in the essay and one or two solutions. My advice on making your selection is to choose ideas you can quickly think, an example to illustrate, okay? So here are my choices. I'm going to choose this cause, which is too many cars on the roads, increasing numbers of people on cars, more convenient than bus and trains. And the solution I'm going to talk about is park and ride schemes. What is park and ride scheme? I will explain in the explanation sentence. Which, which, have to, you know, which has to be in main body paragraph two. So now we are almost ready to start writing our IS problem a solution essay. But first, we have one more task to do, which is vocabularies or vocabulary. So during the planning stage, quickly jot down some vocabulary that comes to mind as you decide which cause and solution you are going to write about. Especially synonyms of keywords, yeah. So especially synonyms of keywords 
this will save you having to stop. Okay, why it's not going down? Yeah, this will save you having to stop and think of the right language while you are writing. For example, you can use traffic jam or heavy traffic instead of traffic congestion. You can use the word queue. You might use this word. You might need this word actually. Vehicles, instead of saying cars all the time, you can use vehicles. Commute, which is traveling to work or traveling every day. Th that means commute. When you travel to work every day, that means commuting. Rush hour, private transport, infrastructure. So with that done, we can focus on the first paragraph of the essay, which is the introduction. Okay, so now I first, I have read the question. I have familiarized myself with the topic words and the instruction words or the keywords of the question. I have fully understood the overall meaning of the question. I have decided on the main cause and a linked solution to it. So now it's time to write the introduction. So how to write an introduction? Good introductions to IELTS problem solution essays have a simple two part structure. Paraphrase the question and then state one key problem or cause and related solution. And that's, that's what we call outline sentence. It should have two to three sentences, be 40 to 60 words long, and then take five minutes to write. So let's paraphrase the question. We have this question here. One problem faced by almost every large city is traffic congestion. Let's see the paraphrase. So let's see the paraphrase question now. One of the most serious issues facing the majority of large urban areas is traffic jams. So as you can see, one of the most serious issues has been written instead of problem. Facing the majority of, so facing the majority was written instead of famous by almost every. Large urban areas instead of large city. So you can use urban areas instead of city. Is traffic jams instead of traffic congestion, or you can even use heavy traffic. Okay. So not my use of synonyms to replace keywords in the question statement. You don't have to replace every keyword, but do so where possible, whilst ensuring that your language sounds natural. And I have already told you about this specific point. So now for the outline statement. Now we need to, to add an outline statement where we, where we outline the two main points that we will cover in the rest of the essay. That is the cause and the solution I chose earlier. Here they are again. Cause, too many cars on the roads. Why? Increasing numbers of people on cars. More convenient than buses and trains. Solution is park and ride schemes. And this is one way to develop them into an outline sentence. Okay, so now let's just write the outline statement. The main reason for this is that there are too many private cars on the roads these days. And a viable solution is to introduce more park and ride schemes. So that's the outline statement. So now let's bring the two elements of our introduction together. But before I jump in the introduction, let me just show you this standard way of writing an outline statement for problem and solution essays. It's beautiful to actually start by the main reason for this is you write the reason here. And a viable solution is blah, blah, blah. So it's a good way to follow. The main reason for this is that blah, blah, blah. And a viable solution is a blah, blah, blah. Okay? So you can use this way to make sure. So I, I'm not actually, I'm not sort of like, I'm not forcing you to memorize this structured or this sort of uh, specific writing. I'm just advising you to follow this structure instead of um, wasting time of, you know, trying or thinking about a perfect sentence to write because many students or many people struggle to start a sentence. So you can start that way. 
the main reason for this is that blah 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 and a viable solution is to blah 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 okay so try to follow this way to make if you struggle in writing or in beginning or in commencing a sentence so now let's read the whole sentence so one of the most serious issues facing the majority of large urban areas is traffic jams the main reason for this is that there are too many private cars on the roads these days, and a viable solution is to introduce more park and ride schemes. So this introduction achieves the important functions. It shows the examiner that you understand the question. It acts as a guide to the examiner as to what your essay is about, and it also helps to keep you focused and on track as you write. So the two ideas in your introduction will become your two main body paragraphs. So main body paragraph one will be about too many cars on the roads and main body paragraph two will be about park and ride schemes. So as you can see, main body paragraph one will be about the main cause and main body paragraph two will be about the main solution, which is quite relatable to the actual cause or reason. Now, how to write main body paragraphs? Okay, so main body paragraphs in IELTS problem solution essays should contain three things. Let's see, topic sentence, where you outline the main idea that has been already written in the introduction. And then you have to explain and give more detail. And then you have to give an example. So now, the in main body paragraph one, the topic sentence summarizes the main idea of the paragraph. That's all it needs to do so. So it doesn't have to be complicated. It plays an important role in ensuring that your ideas flow logically from one to another. It does this by acting as a signpost for the what is to come next. That is what the paragraph will be about. If you maintain a clear development of ideas throughout your essay, you will get high marks for task achievement, cohesion, and coherence. We will now take the idea for our first main body paragraph and create your topic sentence. Obviously, we are going to write about the cause of the problem first. So main body paragraph one will be about too many cars on the roads. Now let's write the topic sentence. The number of people owning cars increases year on year with most families now having more than one car. How beautiful is this topic sentence? So as you can see, this was written in the introduction. Now you have to write it in your own way. You have to may maybe expand on it. Don't add new ideas, just expand on it, make it clearer make it more obvious, you can beautify the sentence. That means make it beautiful, okay? So I, that's the topic sentence. Now we must write an explanation sentence that develops the idea. Let's see the explanation sentence. Most people like the convenience of traveling at the time they want to, rather than being restricted to public transport timetables. So they prefer to drive themselves around rather than taking the bus or train. This is despite the fact that they frequently have to sit in long traffic queues as they near the city center. Okay. Finally, we add an example to support our main point. If you can't think of a real example, it's fine to make one up as long as it's believable. So the examiner is not going to check your facts. Alternative, you could add another piece of information to support your idea. So let's see the example sentence. Whenever I have to attend a meeting in the city, I always drive because it means that I can leave home when I want to, rather than getting stressed about getting to the station in time to catch the train. So that's the three parts of our main body paragraph complete. Here is the finished paragraph, okay? Now let's see the finished paragraph together. Let me just, yeah, okay, I'm going to zoom it. So I, let's read it, read it now slowly. The number of people owning cars increases year on year, with most families now having more than one car. That's the topic sentence. Most people like the convenience of traveling at the time they want to, rather than being restricted to public transport timetables. So they prefer to drive themselves around rather than taking the bus or the train. This is despite the fact that they frequently have to sit in long traffic queues as they near the city center. That's the explanation. Whenever I have to attend a meeting in the city, I always drive because it means that I can leave home when I want to, rather than getting stressed about getting to the station in time to catch the train. 
and that's the example sentence. So as you can see, it's a full written and professional, um, what's called main body paragraph. We now follow the same process for our second main body paragraph. So let's see, main body paragraph two, which, which has to be about the solution, which is part and tight schemes. First, we write the topic sentence to summarize the main idea. So let's see the topic sentence. A solution that is proving successful in many areas is park and light schemes. Now, for the explanation sentence, where we expand on this idea. Explanation sentence. This is where you park your car for free in a large car park on the outskirts of the city and take a bus for the final part of your journey. The fee you have to pay for the bus tip is usually very small and this public transport system is generally very regular, running every 10 minutes or so. Amazing explanation of park and tight schemes. Finally, an example to support this point, example sentence. A survey carried out in the city of Exeter showed that the rush hour congestion decreased by 10% when the council set up a park and light scheme to the north of the city. There was an additional drop of another 10% in traffic volume when a second scheme began operating to the south. So that's the three parts of our second main body paragraph complete. Here is the finished paragraph. So let's read it together. Okay, sorry. Oh, what did I do right now? I'm sorry. I think I zoomed it much. Okay. Oh no, let's go up again. Okay, so a solution that is proving successful in many areas is park and light schemes. That's the, that's the topic sentence. This is where you park your car for the free in a large car park on the outskirts of the city and take a bus for the final part of your journey. The fee you have to pay for the bus tip is usually very small and this public transport system is generally very regular running every 10 minutes or so. A survey carried out in the city of Exeter showed that the rush hour congestion decreased by 10% when the council set up a park and light scheme to the north of the city. There was an additional drop of another 10% in traffic volume when a second scheme began operating to the south. That's it. So now we need a conclusion and our IS problem solution essay is done. How to write the conclusion? The conclusion is a summary of the main points in your essay and can generally be done in a single sentence. It should never introduce new ideas. No new ideas, remember this. If you are below the minimum 250 words after you have written your conclusion, you can add a prediction or recommendation statement. The conclusion is the easiest sentence in the essay to write, but one of the most important. A good conclusion will neatly end the essay, link all your ideas together, sum up your argument or opinion, and answer the question. So now, if you achieve this, you will improve your score for, task, for both task achievement and cohesion and coherence, which together make up 50% of the overall marks. Without a conclusion, you will score below band six for task achievement. You can start almost any final paragraph of an IS problem solution essay with the words in conclusion or to conclude. Let's see. So I, now all you need to do is briefly summarize the main ideas into one sentence. So here's a top tip. Go back and read the introduction to the essay because this is also a summary of the essay. It outlines what you are going to write about. To create a good conclusion, you simply have to paraphrase the introduction. Why? Because the conclusion has to have, you know, the, the key ideas or the main ideas that you have already covered in your essay. So it's simply paraphrasing of the introduction, as simple as that. So you can go back to the introduction, read it again, and then go back to the conclusion and try to paraphrase the introduction just write it in, in a different way, okay? You can't add any new ideas. You can, if you, if you feel like you are short of words or you are short in words, you can just try to add another sentence in the conclusion, which is a recommendation or suggestion sentence. I will show you an example right now. So I, that's the introduction. If you remember the, the introduction, 
Here is the same information formed into a conclusion. I've also added a personal statement at the end to link back to one of my example sentences. You don't have to do this, but in this case, I think that it rounds the essay off better. It rounds off. Rounds off means finish, okay? So to conclude, the major urban problem of traffic congestion caused by the excessive number of private cars on city roads can be partly alleviated by the introduction of park and ride systems on city fringes, fringes instead of, fringes means outskirts. I would certainly use one of it, if sorry, one if it was introduced in my area. So as you can see, the last sentence is a recommendation sentence, okay? Um, I'm just showing you this sentence, by the way, I'm not short of words, but I'm just showing you an example, an example sentence of what recommendation sentence is what a suggestion sentence is. So if you feel like you are um, short of a couple of words, you can just add the specific sentence, okay? But don't add the new ideas. So that's it. We've completed our essay. Here it is with the four paragraphs put all together. So that's the essay here. So as you can see, that's the um, introduction. That's the main body paragraph one, which is the main cause. That's this, the, the, the main body paragraph two, which is the solution. And then we have the conclusion. And we have reached around three to 80 words, which is quite good, okay? Because you have to at least, or you have to write at least uh, um, 250 words. So you have to have a minimum of 250 words, okay? So I, um, that's problem and solution essays. I hope that you have fully understood that specific type of essays. I have, um, you know, I highlighted uh, um, everything. I have tried, um, I, you know, I have tried my hardest to, um, sorry, what, what was that sound? Okay, so I have tried my, um, you know, my hardest to highlight, uh, you know, all the main ideas, all um, what's called, uh, 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 you know, the main points to make sure that you would score high in this specific type of essays. So that's the problem and solution essays. Please go back to the video if you feel like you missed one of the explanation points or if you feel like you want to check this information again or that, uh, that point again. So try to repeat the video until you fully um, comprehend what I have talked about or what I have um, um, totally el elucidated, okay? Or elucidated. So I, I want you please to um, write down um, your questions in the comment section below. If you have any question, please ask me. Don't hesitate to ask me any question. I will reply to you personally. I will do my best to reply to every single one of you because you are my supporters. You are my beautiful subscribers. So guys, um, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and activate the bell button to help receive all the upcoming videos, okay? So don't forget to do this. And I would thank you always, always, always for supporting this channel. And I'm trying my hardest to upload the most useful and beneficial videos for you. I will upload more and more videos about IELTS as, you know, about IELTS, okay? Um, writing task two also, I still have to cover the um, what's called um, uh, advantages and disadvantages essays. And I'm going to cover also um, the double question essays or the direct question essays, okay? So don't forget the strategy. Try to go back and watch the whole video until you fully understood it or you fully understand it. So I, um, yes, that's my advice for you. And I wish you all the best if you are applying or if you are about to take the IELTS exam soon. I wish you all the best. And um, please don't forget to, um, you know, follow the structure. Don't miss any of the paragraphs. You have to have four paragraphs at least. So don't forget that. And don't write too many information. So you don't need, for example, in this specific video or in this specific writing um essay or in this specific type of essays, which is writing those two essays, which is um, problem and solution essays, you don't have to have two problems or two solutions written. By the way, if you have written or if you want to write two problems or two solutions, then you will have to have a very long main body paragraph, which is why do you, you don't need it. 
Do you get what I'm saying? And by the way, if you do this, you will have to start a topic sentence for the first problem or a cause, an explanation, an example. And then in the same paragra paragraph, you have to start by a topic sentence for the second problem or solution that you have already suggested it in the introduction, explanation and example again. So imagine how long and complicated would it be for you. But if you feel yourself comfortable in doing so, just do it. Okay, I'm not telling you, I'm not forcing you to, no, don't do it. No, if you feel yourself comfortable and comfortable to do this or confident to do this, do it. Okay, but as I told you, you need to put in mind or you need to take the time issue into consideration. You only have 40 minutes allowed. Okay, and before writing, you need to, you know, try to remember that point. Before writing your essay, before you start writing, you need to. Um, take about five minutes to think about your main ideas, okay? So, for example, in this specific video, or in, uh, um, I, I have covered problem and solution essays. So you have to think about the main problem and the main solution before you start writing. And even think about the examples because you will need to write examples in the main body paragraph. So try also to think about this in advance to make sure that you score high in this specific task. I thank you again in joining me with this in this video in this very specific and special video. I hope that I have um, fully explained the lesson, and I look forward to seeing you again on my channel. Thank you so much again for joining me. Please again, don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive all my upcoming videos or all my upcoming uploads. Thanks a lot, and see you soon.